good to have you here. So, I believe I have a word for you, and I believe this word will revolutionize our lives if we really get it. So, it, it builds on what I said on Sunday and what I said yesterday. So, um, let's go to Psalm chapter 8 again. I, I'm going to recap a few scriptures. And it's so simple. It's so simple. It's so simple. And we need to really get this. Psalm 8 says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent and majestic and glorious is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory on or above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babe and unwind infants, you have established strength because of your foes that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. So there's an enemy and there's an avenger. And God is doing something to silence them. So um, he conquered them at the cross. But you'll see how this plays out in our lives. When I view and consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained and established, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of earthborn man that you care for him? Yet you have made him but a little lower than God or heavenly beings, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. So you are crowned with the glory of God, and the glory is above the heavens. <laughs> this is crazy stuff. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yes, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent and majestic is your name in all the earth. Okay, so you have been crowned with glory, and his glory is set, settled above the heavens. And he has given you dominion over the works of his hands, and all things have been put under your feet. Hebrews chapter 2. So we're recapping a few scriptures from Sunday and from yesterday. It's such a wonderful revelation. So short, so simple, you know it, but do you know it? Okay, so Hebrews chapter 2 says, For it was not to angels, verse 5, that God subjected the habitable world of the future of which we are speaking. That's the world that we are living in now. It has been solemnly and earnestly said in a certain place, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you graciously and helpfully care for and visit and look after him? For some little time you have ranked him lower and inferior to angels or Elohim, uh, you have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. For you have put everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to man, he left nothing outside of man's control. But at present, we do not see all things subjected to him, to man, but we are able to see Jesus who ranked lower than the angels for a little while, crowned with glory and honor because of his having suffered death in order that by the grace of God to us sinners, he might experience death for every individual person. All right. All things are subject to him. All things are subject to us. You are crowned with glory Jesus is crowned with glory. You are seated with Jesus on the throne at the right hand of the Father in the heavenlies. The crown, is the glory is exalted above the heavenlies. So you are crowned with the glory and you are seated in the heavenlies. Uh, so all things, when you are seated, are under your feet. Okay. All things, when you are in the position of rest are under your feet. All right, so let's just quickly go to Romans 14. It says in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, After all, the kingdom of God is not a matter of getting the food and drink one likes, but instead it is righteousness, the state of that makes a person acceptable to God, heart peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So it's not about the natural food. It's about the spiritual. 
It's not about what food you eat in order to fulfill a ritual, but it's about feasting on the word of God that brings peace and joy. Okay, so we have peace and joy, and the peace and joy causes the kingdom to be uh, manifested. So the kingdom is righteousness. We believe the word of righteousness. We are made holy. We are justified. We are washed clean. We receive his holiness. We receive his Holy Spirit. Righteousness. Peace. Joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay. So righteousness, peace, joy. Let's go to Romans 16, verse 19. For while your loyalty and obedience is known to all so that I rejoice over you, I would have you well versed and wise as to what is good and innocent and guileless to what is evil. Don't be well versed in what is evil and totally oblivious of what is good. We need to be well versed in what is good and innocent and guileless as to what is evil. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Okay, so if you are in the kingdom of God and you've received the Holy Spirit and you, you receive the righteousness and the peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit, you enter Hebrews chapter 4 into the rest by coming to the throne and you're being seated on the throne. Okay, crowned with glory, seated on the throne. Okay, you enter the rest of God in Christ at the right hand of the Father. You have peace. You have joy. Now the God of peace soon as soon as this happens and the peace manifests underneath your feet okay so it happens like this it manifests like this the god of peace soon crush satan underneath your feet okay um it is not in you spending tireless hours to get things right you will do far less and achieve far more by having peace and joy. So here's the strategy of this deception, the strategy of, of getting you to be useless. That's, that's the only thing that darkness can do is that darkness can lie to you. Darkness can cause you to think in a way that makes you to be unfruitful. Darkness can cause you to think in a way that makes you to be ineffectual. So all these things around us, if we look at it and we take fear and we become intimidated by those things, those things have an effect on us, all right? And by our own thinking, we associate with what's here. And we see those things uh, which come from darkness as if it is a big thing that has power we believe that lie as long as we believe that lie as long as you are agitated as long as you have no rest as long as you have um, un unrest inside you not having peace not having joy those things will exist in your life but the moment you enter the rest the moment the peace and the joy manifests with other words, you're not looking to all the things, you know, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, that are seen, but you're looking to the unseen. You're spending time in the secret place and your eyes are on Jesus, okay? You abide in Jesus. You abide in the love. You abide in the light, all right? Entering that rest, peace and joy, all things under your feet. Then, so now you can rule. Now you can speak a word. You can speak a word which changes the situation. You can speak a word which causes all the situations around you to cease. It's not going to cease if you are focused on the problem. It's not going to stop if you're constantly speaking about the problem and you have emotional responses to it. It's, you have authority over these things in the kingdom of God by resting in him, okay? By turning your back on all the problems, 
and visiting Jesus in the secret place on purpose. You go there and you receive peace and you receive joy. And when your mind is one with the mind of Christ, you hear from him and you say what he says. You hear from heaven and you speak a word of authority, a word of the kingdom. It was said of Jesus that the, the, his teaching was not like that of the Pharisees because uh, his teaching was with power. And Jesus said, you are from below, I am from above. Okay. So Ephesians chapter 6 um, kind of also speak about this overcoming thing with the, with the old breastplate of righteousness and, you know, all the armor and so on. Um, so it says here, in conclusion, verse 10, be strong in the Lord, empowered through the union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. So the deceits of the devil, he was working with fear and unrest. He's working with intimidation and you have complete power over all evil in this world if you remain in joy and peace. Okay. So, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, uh, but against despotisms, against powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands, to stand firmly in your place. So we stand. Okay. We stand seated. <laughs> stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins. So that's the word. Having put on the breastplate of integrity, moral rectitude, right standing with God. That's the word of the kingdom. And having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability and the promptness and readiness, etc. Amplified. Produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. So right there you have truth. Right there you have peace. Right there you have righteousness. So it seems like it's, it's the gospel of the kingdom of God. Lift up over all the covering shield of faith. Faith comes by hearing. What? The gospel. Upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation. So salvation by grace. Salvation by faith in the gospel. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit wields, which is the word of God. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit. With all manner of prayer and entreaty to that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding on behalf of all the saints. Okay. So, you need the Word and you need the Spirit. In order to have righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And if you rest in, in abide in Him by abiding in the Word. And if you don't let the Word be taken away from you, yesterday's message. If you don't let the Word be removed from you, your peace cannot be removed from you. Oh, the devil stole my peace. No. The devil stole the Word. And he caused you to look at the cares of the world around you. Let, let's read it, Mark chapter 4. All the devil did was produce stuff to distract you. It's you looking at it. It's not him stealing your peace. So it's not so much in the situation that surrounds you. It's in us looking at the situation that surrounds us. Okay? Verse 3 says, Mark chapter 4, Give attention to this. Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he was sowing... Some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. So the word was never received in the heart. Other seed of the same kind fell on the ground full of rocks where it had not much soil, and once it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. Uh, once it sprang up because it had no depth of soil, and when the sun came up, it was scorched, and because it had not taken root, it withered away. Other seed on this, of the same kind fell up among the thorn plants and the thistles grew and pressed together and utterly choked and suffocated it and it yielded no grain and other seeds of the same kind fell into good well adapted soil and brought forth grain growing up and increasing and yielding 30 times as much 60 times as much 100 times as much so yielding fruit 
So what's the fruit? It's getting what you ask, John chapter 15. When you bear much fruit, my honor is glorified. He says, you ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. Okay. So he says, and he said, he who has ears to hear, let him be hearing, let him consider and comprehend. Verse 13 says, and he said to them, do you not discern and understand this parable? Verse 14, the sower sows the word, the one along the path are those that have the word sown in their hearts, but when, he, when they hear, Satan comes at once and by force takes away the message which is sown in them. And in the same way, the one sown upon the stony ground are those who, when, when they hear the word, at once receive and accept and welcome it with joy. And when they have no real root in themselves, and, uh, and so they endure for a little while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, they immediately are offended and become displeased and indignant, and they stumble and fall away. The, the King James says, Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the, world's, uh, for the uh, word's sake, immediately they are offended. And the ones sown among the thorns are others who hear the word. Then the cares and anxieties of this world and distractions of the age and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the craving and passionate desire for other things creep and choke and suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless. It's not the sickness or the persecution. It's not the cares, the bills that you need to pay that you don't have money for. It's not, it, it's also the glamour, the deceitfulness of riches. It's also passionate desires. It's also cravings. It's all kinds of things that choke the word. Why is the word choked? Because we are not trusting in the word. We are looking and we are being distracted by these other things. So it is not the fact that those things appear that cause us to lose peace it is the fact that we let those things into our minds and let the word in our minds be choked off by those things so we give more attention and time to those things than giving attention and time to the word so how do we rule we abide in the word and let the word dwell in our hearts dwell in our minds and then when something arises from the word, address it and speak over it. From a place of joy and peace, address the situation and speak over it. And immediately it will shrivel up and die. Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, after uh, he was on the way, you know, if you put Mark chapter 11 and John chapter 2 together, Jesus was, uh, was on his way to cleanse the temple. And he came and there was a fig tree speaking of Israel. Speaking of, not Israel, speaking of the Pharisees. Israel was the, the vineyard. Speaking of the Pharisees, fig tree. And he went there and he found no fruit. And then he said, so he didn't um, lose his peace because there was no fruit. He addressed it. He said, no one will ever eat from you again. <laughs> No one will ever eat from your fruit again. And he cursed the fig tree. And he went and cleansed the temple of God from what the Pharisees brought into the temple. And when he got back, the disciples noticed the fig trees withered up. And he said, have faith in God. And then he said later on, whatever you say, you will have. Whatever you say, God will give it to you. So from a position of joy, peace, and righteousness on the throne with the crown of glory, whatever you say, you will have. So don't try to overcome your situation or don't discuss your situation and embrace the fear and embrace the frustration and embrace all the tiny little details of those things and almost revel in the big problem that you have rather acknowledge it's there but seek God turn your back on the problem seek God and when you are seated with Christ 
on the throne with a crown of glory. You have peace. You have joy. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. As soon as you say it, he says it through you. As soon as you pray it, the Spirit prays through you. Uh, you will see the results of these things. Okay, so um, he says, verse 24, 24, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. For to him who has will more be given. And from him who has nothing, even what he uh, what he has will be taken away by force. Why will it be taken away by force? He's not abiding in the word, so the Satan comes and steal it. Steal it away. Satan comes and brings the offense. Satan comes and... So don't give any place to Satan. The accuser, the opposition. Abide in the word. Let the word abide in you. Abide in the word. Let the word abide in you. This is how you keep the peace. You don't keep the peace by trying not to be affected by the situation. Oh, I'm not, not going to let this steal my peace. I'm not going to let this steal my peace. It's already gone. It's in this, abiding the word. And spend time with Jesus in spirit. Meditate on the word. Spend time in prayer. Um, you, will, you will have peace. I'm telling you these messages that we had in the last couple of weeks of abiding the, in the word and abiding in love, abiding in the light. Uh, that is what God means by you having righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. So we don't yet see all these things. But if we are here with Jesus, seated with him on the throne, we do see Jesus. So keep your eyes on Jesus. And then you have peace, righteousness, and joy. And the God of peace crushes Satan underneath your feet. It's speaking of the manifestation of something that's already been given. We need to access it. We need to go deeper. We need to, um, to really take the inheritance. We really need to move deeper into the spirit. We need to pursue him. We need to go into the secret place and hear from God. There's some, some place where we need to uh, pray to God, tell him what's wrong. Philippians chapter 4, make your wants known to God. But then there's a time where you need to keep quiet and let God speak. Okay? And now you remove those thoughts that you, you prayed to God. You said, Lord, this is the problem that we have. Okay, you make your wants known to God. And then you put those things to the side. And you let God speak to you. How, what is God's response on this situation? So when you read, God will speak to you. But when you sit in meditation and you sit in prayer, and you sit in worship with God, He will speak to you about your situation. Don't let your mind be so busy about your problem before God, that God never gets a chance to speak to your mind about what's going to happen. So if your mind is as joy and peace, if your mind is under the control of the Spirit, and you get your input in your mind from the Spirit and not from the five senses realm, you're in a position of rulership. And then you just say what He puts in your heart and mind. You just speak a word. You just speak a word. And... The God of peace crushed underneath your feet by the words. Okay, so if your mind is going to be fearful, if your mind is going to be full of troubles and full of cares, the word that has the power to save your souls, James chapter 1, <whistles> removed out of your mind. So guess what? What you meditate on is going to be what's going to happen. Okay, so uh, it's going to determine whether you are subject to your problems or whether your problems are underneath your feet. This is something that Prophet Kurbes van Riesberg used to say many times. He said, your thoughts is a preview, like a movie preview <laughs> of your future. So uh, it's like the forthcoming attractions. So 
we, we really need to get our thoughts in line with the word. And we really need to say what the word says. We really need the word to dwell in our hearts. And we really need to dwell in the word. Okay, We need to enter there into that place. Peace, joy, righteousness. And from there, we just speak a word. We've been wasting time. We've been spending time trying to work for Jesus, trying to sort things out. It's now time to spend time with him. And he sorts out the rest. It's so easy. Um, we stand on the finished work of Christ. We stand on what he already did, which brings us peace and joy, <laughs> which is the kingdom. And the kingdom is his authority and his power. So I hope this blesses you. It's so simple we can make it. It's so simple we can take it and subdue and rule. Okay? So whatever is ruling over your heart needs to be subjected. Colossians chapter 3 says, um, as far as this world is concerned, you have died and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ appears, you will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. So we need to spend time with the glory so that the glory can appear, so that Christ can appear in us. We need to seek out our new life hidden with Christ in God so that Christ can appear in us to the world. And then it says, so kill the evil desires lurking in your members. So the evil desires lurking in our members are killed when we don't look at the prompting of the evil desire, but we visit the secret place and we spend time there and we let his spirit influence our hearts, his word influence our hearts. You will see how quickly your flesh obeys. You will see how quickly your biology gets in line. Your biology gets in line when you walk in the spirit. There might be some resistance, but it's worth really uh, not obeying the evil desires lurking in, the, in your members. It's worth it. It's worth going there and being subject to his peace and joy and righteousness and letting the peace and joy and righteousness rule. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts and be an umpire in your hearts. That the peace of God will guard over your hearts, Philippians 4, and, and um, garrison Mount God and protect you. So we need the peace. Okay. I hope this has really blessed you. This is what I have on my heart for you today. Um, we need to let the peace of God guard. Okay. So um, if you have any further prayer requests, you, you know, you can comment and you can ask for prayer requests. If you have any other testimonies, um, you can comment. But if there's not something coming in in the next, next couple of seconds, I'm going to end the stream here. All right. So, but I want to, I want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I just pray, let every person watching this be drawn into your peace, be taken into your joy, be taken up into the heavenlies, be lifted up into your glorious presence, be seated and into the rest. Lord, I pray, let's, let every person's heart be completely void of offense. Let every person's mind be completely void of troubles and problems and let them think of what is kind and winsome and good and of good report. Lord, I pray, let their thoughts be from the Spirit of God. Let their thoughts be focused on what is above and not what is beneath. So, Lord Jesus, I pray, let us have, um, through, through your word and through your thoughts ruling in us, let us have complete victory over everything that is on this earth. Thank you for your cross. Thank you for the victory that you've given. Let that victory manifest in us. Let that victory flow through us. Lord Jesus, we pray for power. We pray for authority. We pray that we will see the kingdom of God established. And now we just pray for our country. In Jesus' name, I just speak a word uh, over our political arena. In Jesus' name, I speak a word of peace. In Jesus' name, I just say in Jesus' name, the will of God will, have, will prevail. The will of God will prevail. And everything the devil is trying to do will just fall to the ground. And it will not come to fruit. 
it will just disappear and even in people's uh, worry we will see the light shine through and we will see uh, this country and this economy burst forth and bloom and blossom and we will see in the next 10 years we will see an incredible increase and growth in our economy in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just pray, let all the, the evil thoughts and all the evil ideas that is at play that people want to bring in, let it just fall to the ground in Jesus' name and let the kingdom of God be established. Let revival come to this nation and it's even starting now in Jesus' name. We thank you for hearts to be surrendered and open to God and let Christ reign in his church, in his body, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Wow, hi Karin Grunewald. So good to see you here. Please send my love to Greg. I'll call him a bit later today. And uh, yeah, my beautiful wife says amen. <laughs> All right. But bless you guys and uh, thank you for watching. And um, we'll see one another again. And uh, it's time to, to end now. So have an awesome, wonderful day.